Okay, so I've got about three hours worth of information packed into 15 minutes. Um, what I will say in short is uh, I'm going to give a high-level overview of a handful of items. Uh, slides here, there are 30 of them. Um, I put so much information in here so that uh, as organizations review slides and uh, information after the webinar, you have access to it. So um, I'm certainly not going to go through everything in de detail, but uh, I definitely want to touch base on a handful of items. Uh, four in particular, um, I was asked to give a little bit of an update on UBIT, and that is related to the transit benefit. I'll talk about that. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the work that the Coalition for Smarter Transportation is doing, uh, statewide and city transportation uh, policy efforts. I'll give an update on the reauthorization of the FAST Act, as well as, I think, an important overview of what's going on with the COVID-19 in terms of federal assistance and what we can expect from the federal government um, in the short term, and then I think uh, in the medium term as we hopefully and quickly uh, get out of this, uh, this pandemic. So just let me start again with UBIT. What is UBIT? Um, it is a, a term that is, is coined that explains and describes uh, a provision of law that uh, is a part of the 2018 tax bill required nonprofits and tax exempt organizations, including universities, to pay taxes on uh, benefits that they're providing to their commuters in the form of, of transportation fringe benefits or parking benefits. Uh, this was having a significant financial impact on nonprofits. Uh, and uh, universities as they provided their employees with transit benefits uh, and even parking benefits. One university I spoke to was even so um, affected that it cost them $1.5 million. Uh, essentially, we worked hand-in-hand uh, -hand with a number of organizations, um, both in the transportation world and outside the transportation world, to eliminate that tax. And as a part of the end of the year 2020 appropriations bill, uh, the UBIT provision that was a part of the 2018 uh, uh, tax bill was eliminated. Uh, more importantly, that provision was made retroactive. What does that mean? If you were a tax exempt organization or a university and you pay taxes on parking or transit that you provided to your employees, you can write and ask for a rebate as a part of your 2021 tax return. Uh, so it's very important because, generally speaking, uh, nonprofits and tax-exempt organizations don't follow or file, uh, you know, tax returns often. The, the form they have is very short. Uh, but if you did pay uh, corporate or pay the 21% tax, the UBIT tax, on parking or transit benefits as a nonprofit or tax-exempt organization, make sure you talk to your tax advisor, your tax counselor, because the money you gave the IRS, you are due back. And in many cases, as I mentioned earlier, that could be hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars from large organizations. For the private sector, uh, the rules have not changed. We are working to change those rules uh, and effectively trying to get the transit benefit uh, expanded to other forms of transportation including verified carpools, and that's a very important definition because we don't want to, to, to give away uh, federal benefits to, for people who, who share single rides, i.e., let me take a, a taxi or an Uber or what have you. We really want to benefit those who are truly carpool. So there's some language things in there that we're working on, and there are other organizations um, that are also working on that. We also want to restore uh, the bike benefit, and those are things that we're working on and hopefully will be part of of a transportation bill. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things we're doing at the state level. Um, you know, a lot of the work that that really I think defines TDM and uh, smarter transportation and, and really uh, the world that we all live in, that you all live in, is it's not at the state and local level. Uh, there's a, a, a phrase that we use um, as a part of our meetings, and, and we've been in 20 state capitals in the past year and a half. Um, and the reality of it is we have a dime's worth of, a dollar's worth of need and a dime in our pocket. That's a long way of saying our transportation system is so oversubscribed that building alone will never fix the problem. We need to have smarter and better transportation policy, not just infrastructure. Our transportation policy cannot just be let's build and buy more. We need to manage our assets better. We need to use more technology. 
We need to work with other stakeholders to increase average vehicle occupancy, get people out of cars and into transit, into telework, into other uh, modes of transportation. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. You can do that through programs and projects where you ingest uh, uh, money into a system uh, to, to encourage employers to take specific actions, uh, to give money for localities to do micro transit, to do shuttle programs, to work with uh, employees and give incentives. Those ordinances and requirements, things like the San Francisco TDM ordinance or the Washington State Commute for Production program, where we've seen marked reductions in drive alone rates once the private sector and the public sector begin to work together towards common goals. There's also things like development rules where we can look at land use policy um, and look at, at encouraging better use of land in terms of uh, transit-oriented development parking. So there's a variety of different policies that we're working on, including user side sticks and care, polling, and tax incentives, the whole nine yards. Um, you know, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but to simply say that these types of policies work. This is a slide uh, from the San Francisco uh, Department of Environmental Quality. Um, I'm not entirely sure that's their entire name. I actually think I just made that name up, but this is from the, the San Francisco Department of Environment, uh, where they, they show that their transit benefit ordinance has directly led to about 44,000 people switching from drive alone to alternative commute, whether that's transit, bamboo, carpool, bicycle. That is a significant amount of vehicle trips reduced and an even greater amount, amount of, air, of uh, emissions reduced. So this is what we're talking about, mode shift, getting people out of what they were doing and into something else. And when you talk about mode shift and you talk about 44,000 vehicles, that begins to have a real impact on the transportation system as a whole. So that is why we look to policies. Again, another example, um, this is from the Washington State Community Production um, Report to, to their legislature where you see drive alone rates um, in impacted uh, businesses are much higher um, than, than those that, that, that are impacted or are engaged in a commuter production program. And mode shift, mode shift, mode shift, getting people out of their cars and into options. Uh, these are a couple of examples uh, of different types of programs, regional innovation grant programs, incentive programs, direct funding for TMAs and employer-sponsored programs. We're working right now in Massachusetts um, state legislation up there, the first time ever, actually includes real money for TMAs in Massachusetts uh, to the tune of $25 million. Uh, in the past, they were they were splitting hundreds of thousands of dollars. We hope um, to take that example and move it into other states. Again, ordinances, examples are the commuter production law, uh, transit benefit ordinances like in San Francisco, LA, uh, and others, and then other employer options. Um, other rules that we look at and that we've been working at, um, again, looking at parking policies, eliminating parking minimums uh, in a lot of municipal areas where when you build in the past for every, um, you know, apartment you build, uh, you need to have X amount of, of parking spaces. We're going the reverse of that, saying if you build a development meant for 100 people, only include uh, 50 parking spaces. Let's do more to include and, and promote uh, uh, taking transit and biking and, and walking the whole nine yards. Uh, and then again, looking at user side sticks and carrots. So these are some of the examples of policies that we are working at. Again, uh, we are we are working in 20 state capitals in 2019 and 2020, including Minnesota, Georgia, California. Here's a list of, of some of our examples of success. Uh, you know, we're working certainly on the transit benefit ordinance uh, in both Seattle, which is passed and LA, which will become active later this year. Boston and Sacramento are in the process of passing transit benefit ordinances. We've got some language in the Virginia State Transportation Bill related to smart transportation and, and funding, as well as um, how to use tolling dollars to incentivize um, uh, other modes of transportation. Uh, moving on as, as quickly, but as succinctly as I possibly can, um, we're also working at the federal level. Um, this year, uh, the federal transportation bill known as the FAST Act expires the end of FY20, uh, and we have a large uh, 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 funding gap between how much the gas tax brings in versus how much current spending uh, would need, and then if you add spending to it, how much more we would need. Now, mind you, this this slide was developed early in March. Life has changed. 
Money has fallen from the skies. A billion dollars use is now a dollar and a trillion dollars is ten dollars. So the cost of a transportation bill appears at this point to no longer be the stumbling block block the passage. Um, so I want to get to that in a second. But where we're at right now is that there is a Senate bill that has passed. The House has yet to tear. I'm sorry, a Senate committee bill um, that handles highway stuff uh, issues has passed. There's not yet been any action in the House. Um, I have some additional information here on the Senate Environment Public Works Bill. One of the things that I will note, something that we worked very, very hard on and continue to work on is, is directing as much funding as possible to smarter transportation. Um, and one of the things that is in the Senate bill is a congestion relief program that has $40 million um, in it that would be uh, directed towards large urban areas to reduce single occupancy vehicles through a variety of different solutions, including congestion management systems and TDM type strategies, as well as ITS strategies. That includes incentives to encourage carpool and vehicle programs. We believe and our goal for that program is to be a $1.5 billion program. We believe now that money is becoming less of an issue, at least in the short term, but the odds of a larger congestion relief program um, and a transportation bill are there. Uh, we also worked very hard on a carbon emission reduction program that it takes a handful of eligibilities um, from the CMAC program and, and makes it a $600 million a year program. We're hoping that it'll be much larger once it's passed into law. But the problem with the CMAC program was that over the last two decades, every new type of project became eligible under CMAC and it's so oversubscribed. What we did is we took a carbon emission reduction program made it into law and had it focused primarily on reducing single occupancy vehicles and in, in, increasing the amount of electrification in um, our transportation system. Very two very narrow um, eligibilities, again, $600 million a year. We want it to be more. Um, we're talking about a $2 trillion bill. I want that 600 to be 6 billion a year. And that's our hope at this point, um, is to take some of these numbers that you see and make a much, much more. Uh, there's other information about the Senate bill, uh, as well as some of the other policies that we worked on. Again, probably in itself would take a half an hour, 45 minutes to go through, but I'm almost already out of time. And I do want to talk a little bit about COVID um, because there's a very, very important information I want to, want to get across. So phase three of COVID passed um, Congress last, uh, last week, I guess it was. The days are all blurring into one another. Um, this is the first time I put on a button-up shirt in about a month, it feels like. Um, but phase three of, of COVID passed uh, last week, and that's what we're calling. As a part of that is $25 billion for transit to recoup lost fare box revenues and address COVID-19. Something that this group should be well, well aware of. If you are operating any type of, of, of van pool program, any type of transit shuttle program, what have you, no matter what it is, if it's van pools, if it's shuttles, if it's micro transit, even if your program has never seen a dime of federal transit funds, the money that was appropriated last week is designed to keep those programs operational, including empty seat subsidies, additional operating assistance, capital assistance. There are now more than 12,000 van pools around the country right now. And I would hate to see that number drop down to 4,000, 5,000, whatever, because for two months, people aren't going to work and those vans set empty and unpaid for. Congress specifically appropriated money to keep those van pools and transit in general functioning for the next several months. So if you operate a van pool program, reach out to your designated recipient and let them know how much money you need to keep those vans together. If you have questions about that, feel free to contact me. I can tell you who your designated recipient is and give you a lot more information on that. I will simply conclude by saying phase four, which is the next phase of, uh, of our, our response to this horrible, horrible pandemic, will likely include an infrastructure title. Whether that's reauthorization or just money like it was in 2008, I've had 20 conversations about today and it's split 10-10 but there will be money for infrastructure. I can't tell you how important it is for this community to become vocal at this time. We're seeing no congestion on our roads because people aren't working. We're gonna see people fearful of getting back into transit. We're gonna see 
people fearful of sharing as a result of this COVID-19. When the job market does come back, congestion is going to get to a point where yesterday in early March, it was never worse. We're gonna laugh at those days if we do not nationally take a concerted effort to get people out of drive alone vehicles. And that's gonna take more than just simply marketing share ride campaigns. We're gonna need real money, real incentives, real investment. I know this community can do that. And I hope that you stay attuned to what's happening at the federal and state level, and more importantly, voice your opinion and get involved. So with that, I will get off my soapbox and be happy to answer as many or as few questions as you have. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason. That, uh, as always, you, you you pack a lot into a little amount of time, and that's one of the things that that we love about having you as a presenter every year and, and as a sponsor as well, so thanks. Uh, I've got two questions already that we want to make sure that, that we get in here. One of them is, uh, where where should folks watch for additional information that you're that you're sharing? Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on right now. You're keeping your your finger on the pulse of all of this. Uh, how can people see what see what you're putting out into the world? <laughs> so our website, uh, smartertransportation.org, uh, is is one. I will be honest with you. We're a small organization. It's 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 made up many of volunteers of people. So we're updating our website as much as possible. Um, to the extent practical, I put things out to the TDM listserv. There are other associations that are that are just as involved. I know ACT is a, is a, is a sponsor of this, and they're they're doing their thing for the more TDM acts. Uh, APTA has been, a, you know, really stepped up to the plate. I think so. Certainly, follow your associations. Um, I think it's very important that they they will provide information to you. Stuff that we'll be putting out will, will come directly on the SmarterTransportation.org website, um, and, and, and you know because the nature of, of our organization, we're not trying to hide stuff behind paywalls or firewalls. If it's important, uh, it'll be through. The, we'll get it out to the TDM listserv and as many other avenues as possible. Um, but always, most of our stuff will be found on the website itself. And the, so the, the next question, and, and this has come from a couple different folks, so again, I'll sort of smush them together. Um, so what what's the best place to find out more information about the, the van pool inclusion in that in the COVID response because that, that was also something that I hadn't heard about. I know that uh, many of us on this call are either involved with fan pool programs directly or, or have colleagues that are. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the shortest thing to do would be to, to, you know, email me because it's not, there's so many things wrapped up in that 25 billion. Essentially, there would have been more specificity, specificity more segments of money handed out to different pots. But, you know, this is an emergency. This is Unlike anything we've seen in a hundred years, so you know they 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 instead of trying to nitpick on how to get every dollar out and make sure every constituency was taken care of, just got the money out to two per, predominantly two two entities, designated recipients, which are generally the largest transit agency in a metro area, or state DOTs for those rural and small urban programs. Um, so if, if you are not a designated recipient or uh, if you get money from them, please just re email me and I can walk you through and give you some information. And I think you can sort of see my website there, Jason at smartertransportation.org um, or Jason at jpabllc.com is good too. Um, and I can help you get in touch with the people. But essentially, the money is going to designated recipients. And I can tell you right now, they're not going to stand at the front door and hand it out. You're going to have to go and make sure you get in front of them, knock on the door and say, hey, I've got 10 vans that are gonna be sitting vacant and they're gonna be returned to me unless we figure out a way to pay for those empty seats. I know most of the vendors, most of the operators are willing to work with agencies, half meet them halfway. I can't speak for all of them, but I know a lot of them that I've talked to have. So um, I would also rely on, on, on using your vendors if you have them and if you don't have a vendor, um, again, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to talk to you about it.